Do you like it banned? Well, I would say that from, from the religious perspective, from an Abrahamic perspective, um, it would be, I would think it would be banned, and it should be banned like um, alcohol is banned. Addictive, causes problems. Uh, the, the bill to the UK for associated violence and mental health and all these things from people who, who suffer from this addiction. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we'll be checking out a video titled Muslim Man Tries to Change UK Rules and ban alcohol got humiliated and destroyed wow this is going to be another interesting one let's check it out go abdullah al-andalusi was asked whether he thought gambling not alcohol should be banned despite the question about gambling he responded by bringing alcohol into the picture which is prohibited in some religious contexts like islam and societal contexts due to its addictive nature and the problems it causes, such as violence and mental health issues. Bets, punts and gambles made by 45% of us suckers every month. It's not just adults placing bets these days. A recent gambling commission audit counted 450,000 children betting regularly on fruit machines at fixed odds betting terminals, FOBTs. He argued that the substance in question should be similarly banned because it also poses societal risks and burdens, citing examples of other banned drugs like crack cocaine. His concern is that liberalizing access to such substances could lead to more harm, suggesting that banning them is a better approach to protecting society from their negative effects. Because he thinks alcohol is like gambling, but the couple who lost their son due to gambling had a different opinion on this comparison. It's so fast, mm. and then you crash out of it. And it's all, also the deliberately immersive. So, like, you, you're not aware of anything else that's going on. And seductive. Yes, very. And, and, and you crash out of them, not because your body's had enough. Charles and Liz Ricci shared the heartbreaking story of their son, Jack, who tragically took his own life due to a gambling addiction. They explained that Jack had no prior mental health issues before he started gambling at the age of 17, which was illegal as he was underage. They compared gambling to alcohol, saying both can really suck you in and mess with your head, but... Not because your body's had enough. It's not like alcohol or drugs where your body stops you. You crash out largely because you've got no more money, but you crash out physically, totally capable. Your brain is obviously all over the place. You're still in gambling mode. Um, and actually, you crash out into that world of low self-esteem, of despair, self-loathing. Your brain completely disordered in terms of your decision-making. And actually taking your own life maybe makes sense. Unlike alcohol, with gambling, it's not like your body stops you. It's more about running out of money. So, you can crash out feeling messed up mentally, stuck in that gambling mindset. This can lead to feeling really low about yourself, desperate, and even considering drastic actions like hurting yourself. It's like your brain's all over the place, making bad decisions even when you know better. So, alcohol addiction is very different from gambling addiction. Now, Abdullah al-Andalusi, ignorant of these things, shifts the discussion to compare them to gambling. Yeah, and I think the last point is that the point and the purpose of, of economics is distribution of wealth and resources. But in gambling, there is no exchange. It's interesting what you say. It, it is as detrimental to society as some Class A drugs. Aisha, is there, is there any kind of an argument for really clamping down on it? The host, after having had enough of Abdullah al-Andalusi's arguments, turns to Aisha Ali Khan, co-organiser of Women's March London, to get her opinion. He asks Aisha if there's any argument for imposing strict controls or regulations on gambling, considering Abdullah's comparison of its and alcohol's societal impact to that of Class A drugs. I think we definitely need to start looking at it. I think growing up, um, for us, 
gambling was always socially unacceptable. But I've seen in the last 10, 15 years, we're seeing glamorous adverts on TV. We're seeing it glamorized in Hollywood. My son, who's now 15, found out about gambling through watching the movie Hangover. And he was asking me questions. So we actually need to take responsibility. I'm, I'm a classroom teacher, so I see children who have access to online games on their mobile phones, um, access on the internet. They don't understand, but what they see are these gorgeous, glamorous adverts on TV, maybe uh, late at night, but um, uh, uh, popping up all the time on, on uh, social media platforms. So if we are not going to take um, responsibility now, we are creating generations upon generations of gamblers who will be addicted to gambling in the coming future generation. Aisha Ali Khan is concerned about how gambling has become more accepted and even glamorized in movies and TV ads over the past decade or so. She mentioned how her son, who's 15, learned about gambling from watching movies like The Hangover and started asking questions. Now note that the movie is not just about gambling. The main plot of the movie is about alcohol. Aisha thinks if we don't start taking responsibility now and regulating how gambling is promoted, we're setting up future generations to have more gambling problems. But with those baseless arguments, I think the host had enough of her, so he brought the opposition to speak. To be targeted in, the, in a way by, um, I think this gentleman here said but about... But the vast the... majority of people surely in this country have a flutter now and again on the Grand National. I mean, John, you play uh, poker, don't you? I do, yes. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you play, do you tell us about the enjoyment of it. After cutting off Aisha Ali Khan, the host remarked, Surely the vast majority of people in this country have a flutter now and then, like on the Grand National. Then he turned to John Bryan, a 2006 World Series of Poker main event competitor, and asked him to share about the enjoyment of playing poker as a leisure activity, likening it to the enjoyment of drinking a can of beer with friends. But, but actually, families. My, my, well, my family are perfectly OK with me playing poker. My daughters know that I play poker. My, my partner says to, says to me that in terms of the amount that she might spend on a night out, it's probably more than I spend on a night out going to play poker. So, I mean, my family have no issue at all, you know, with me playing poker, with me gambling. As I said, it's, it's how I've met a whole, whole number, of, number of people. I don't have an issue with it at all. And actually, the fact that there are a, a majority of people in this country, as you said in the introduction, who engage in, in gambling in one form or another, you know, throughout, throughout the year, that shows that actually that is socially acceptable. But there are clearly things which are socially unacceptable. John explained that poker is a big part of his life and something he really enjoys. He plays with friends, family and even strangers. Seeing gambling as a perfectly normal activity that people have been doing for ages without any real issue. To him, it's just a hobby and a pastime, and he even considers it a bit like a sport. His family's cool with him playing poker. They get it's just like what they might spend on a night out. John thinks gambling, including poker, is totally socially acceptable, unlike some other stuff. He said lots of people find it fun and harmless, Kind of like how people have been using alcohol for ages without it being a big deal. It's just a way for people to have fun. And when it comes to alcohol and gambling, John is not the only one who is having fun. Most people manage to gamble without any the, problem. The lines between um, addictive behaviour and normal behaviour, normal interaction with gambling or alcohol or drugs, is, is you need to define that line. And for me, it's never been a problem with gambling. I've played a lottery, I've, I've often gone to a roulette and done quite well. Um, I do think people need education on recognising adverse behaviour patterns so they can stop that addictive behaviour and recognise it when they're going into it. And, and I think education is the key to any addictive behaviour. Mm. This guy's into gambling and alcohol, but here's the kicker. He thinks the real challenge lies in knowing where normal enjoyment ends and addiction begins. For him, gambling has been pretty chill, he plays the lottery, hits up the roulette table, and usually comes out ahead. But he's all about educating folks on spotting when their habits might be turning into something more serious. He figures teaching people to recognise those red flags early on is key to keeping things in check and avoiding full-blown addiction. Well, what do you think? Should alcohol or gambling be banned? 
Share your thoughts with us on this in the comments section. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on the latest updates. And if you haven't already, join our channel membership for exclusive content and perks. Until next time, stay tuned. Oh, wow. What an interesting debate. What an interesting debate. Should alcohol or gambling be banned? That, I think that's the topic of the debate. If you ask me, I think both alcohol and gambling, they are both socially acceptable. I think it will be more better when you come up with a way to, you know, address the people involving in gambling and also the people involving in taking alcohol. If there's a way they can be educated in order to be able to manage themselves properly. Because a lot of people don't know when to say no, don't know when to give up. As a result of that, they, they become addicted to gambling or they become addicted to taking alcohol. And in that state, it's very difficult to be able to stop them. It's very difficult to be able to stop them. A lot of them end up going through a rehabilitation. In some cases, a lot of them go into debt. In some cases, a lot of them try to take their own life as a result of uh, what they are passing through. So I believe if there could be a way to, you know, educate those people in early stage, so they'll be able to know how to manage themselves well in order not to uh, go extreme to the limit where they will not be able to, uh, they will not be able to stop themselves. Because banning alcohol totally in UK or banning gambling totally in UK, I think it will be unfair to those that uh, are, are engaged in those activity that, uh, that see it as fun, that are not addicted to it, I think it will be unfair to them. Because a lot of people engage in this gambling, engage in taking alcohol as something fun, as something they share with their family, as something they share with their friends. So banning alcohol totally or banning gambling totally is going to be totally unfair to these people. So I believe instead of us thinking of a full ban in alcohol or a full ban in gambling, we should come up with a better way to address this issue by educating those people so they'll be able to know their limits and they will not end up being addicted to uh, alcohol and addicted to gambling. Because a lot of people, not just alcohol, not just gambling, a lot of people tend to be easily addicted to something when they tend to do it consistently and as a result, they find fun in doing such activity. So I believe... People should be educated based on that in order to be able to know their limits. So I believe that should be the right thing to do instead of calling it a full ban. Because I can remember vividly that uh, there was a time that I was educated regarding uh, addition uh, on, uh, on economics. I can't really remember the full topic. I think uh, they were teaching about utility and marginal utility and also uh, diminishing marginal utility. And I think, if I can remember, my economics teacher defined utility as the satisfaction, uh, the sa uh, define utility as satisfaction, and define marginal utility as the total satisfaction you get from the consumption of a particular commodity. And he also de defined, I think, uh, diminishing marginal utility as the point where you get to where the satisfaction you are deriving from the consumption of a particular commodity begins to diminish. So at that point, you have to understand that the satisfaction you are getting from gambling or you are getting from the consumption of alcohol is diminishing. So at that point, you should call it a stop. So people have to be educated on those things in order for them to know how to be able to manage themselves instead of coming up with the idea of banning this thing totally because it will be unfair to those that really enjoy playing this game and drinking alcohol. It will be totally unfair to them. So I've really learned a lot just listening to every one of the speaker. I'd also like to hear your opinion. Let's get the conversation rolling. 
Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day. Thank you.